Hello everyone, welcome to a new episode of Shinai Academy. I am Ben Kenobi, and with, my, with me is my friend Shinai Matthew Tuck. How are you doing today, my, my I'm doing friend? great, thank you. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm looking forward to talk about this movie. Okay. No. That's good. There is a piece of news I want to get started and I want to get out. We I we put it up on online this past Sunday night, but I want to bring it up here as well. Okay. Only one coming. They're coming out at the same week, only two days later. Yep. On May twenty seventh instead of May twenty fifth. That Friday instead, yeah, right. I have. I think I told you my theory, but do you have any theories on why why they move? Um, well, originally I said, obviously said I didn't understand it. Uh, two reasons I didn't understand it was May 25th was the debut of the original Star Wars. And it's the debut of Obi-Wan Kenobi. You know, A New Hope, obviously Obi-Wan Kenobi's in it. So I, I thought it made sense. And I think that moving it was just actually, I think you brought it up, was the uh, uh, Star Wars celebration starts that Thursday. So I think that makes sense now that you that, that you brought that up. I think that is probably what it is. They are going to debut it at, at Celebration for the fans. Uh, that, that might guess anyway. I could be wrong about that, but... Yep. Yeah, I mean, in, oh, that's know, huge. Oh. That would be huge. If they debut episode one and two right there for yeah. everybody, that's huge. <laughs> that's going to be huge. I mean, even though it's coming out what, 12 hours later, if not? About, but yeah. There is something special about being the first one seeing that. Not only that, but you're seeing it in a theater type, you know, situation on a huge screen. So you're, it's like you're in a theater with a whole, with a whole bunch of fans. So it, that place is going to be rocking. <laughs> Especially I mean, two I, hours. Oh, oh, I know. Oh, oh, I know I can be totally wrong. But... But yeah, that might be it. It makes sense. It makes absolute sense. Absolute sense. Like I said, that that would be the biggest buzz coming out is people being able to talk about it twelve hours before everybody else does. Just or the people that were there. That's huge. What, do you have any predictions about what you want to see in that first two episodes? The first two episodes. I think we're gonna just find out why he's getting off Tatooine why he's actually going to take the chance and leave Luke alone. I think that's what we'll get. I think three and four will be him. You know, they said there's two, two fights between him and Vader. So we're going to get Vader early and then we're going to get Vader late, but the Inquisitors are going to be mostly in the middle. What's that? Really? That's what they they, they've confirmed it. They, uh, Disney has confirmed it. That they're gonna they're gonna at least have two and I don't know if it's two fights but it's two encounters they're gonna have two oh. different encounters is what I've is what they they have said and we know for sure the last the second one is gonna be a lightsaber battle I mean that's pretty a given wouldn't you say yeah oh yeah absolutely I don't think they would yeah. give us the lightsaber battle first and then give us a, a, a an encounter where they just have a conversation at the end <laughs> that would be so <laughs> horrible yeah. well. I mean, you're all talking about Captain Kennedy here, but um, <laughs> no, no, I take that back. I take that back. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm not in But um, no. imagine it. The first time they meet, they have the encounter of back and forth. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I think I that's when we'll get that that line of "I still feel the good in you" from Obi Wan. I think that's when we'll get that conversation. Yeah, the early. I I forget how many episodes is this? They're saying six. Okay. So, so that, I'm assuming forty five to fifty minutes. Okay. So that first encounter will be episode one or episode two. Mm-hmm. That is my prediction. Episode three or four mm-hmm. will be a flashback episode. And we see them doing Clone Wars Saga, yep. them as a team, as a team, them as brothers, 
fine, fine, mind design. Yeah. Really, the Philippines that I just saw it that fine. Yeah, they were supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And I think that episode six will be the fight to him up battle. Yeah. So, well, and, well, so what if we get one and two, episode one and two, at the end of episode two, we get what we talked about before, which is what I said at the end of five, where Vader just shows up. But at the end of two, we get Vader just showing up. And then three is flashback episode. And we get their perspective on each of their perspectives on the same event. So they pick an event that happens where they feel where Anakin feels like the Jedi turned on him or or didn't do the right thing, and Obi Wan sees it the other way, and we see why from their different perspectives why Anakin because that's what I want to see. I want to see why Anakin turns overall. I want to see where him and the Jedi differ, and I want to see that like where he sees it in a certain way. But they see it in a certain way because they're they're coming at it from a different angle. He's being manipulated by Palpatine. They they are still on the the light side. Do you know what I mean? So I, I want to see that tug of war between where what makes him actually turn. Like right? what are these events that happen with Palpatine influencing him that makes him see the situations different than Obi Wan? Because you would think he spends way more time with Obi Wan than than he does Palpatine. But Palpatine has such a huge influence on him, and Obi Wan seems to have none almost at the end. So which is weird. Let, let me ask you something. If mm -hmm. you were, and if we are getting one episode of a flashback, okay, can you see Mace Windu come back? I think so. Why not? I mean, he's there. Why wouldn't you see him? He's definitely a part of the Clone Wars. He's a huge part of the Clone Wars. I mean, it's him and Yoda that are basically running everything with Palpatine. So, and you know, and you know, Samuel L. Jackson wanted him to come back. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. He's said it many times. What if? I think I think we all know this is Samuel L. Jackson, Matt. And I think Oh I do. And I think he's been I think they take this already. And I think and I think I think he's just playing with us. Saying how he wants to come back. Yeah. I think that's how many times I think he came back and I think I think it makes the most sense. I think it makes the most sense of anybody. No, yes. But my thing is, where has he been? The only thing I guess you could say is that he was beaten up that bad where it took him that long to recover. It took him 20 years to recover, 10 I years. I don't want to see him back in the flashback. I don't need to see him. Oh, you don't want to see him still alive? I don't want to see him still alive. I, I okay, okay, okay. I mean, if he feel alive, that brings up too many issues for me. Okay, fair I mean, enough. I agree. No, I completely agree with that. That's why I was wondering, you know, how would you want to see it? I, I, I got you now. In and flashbacks, I, yeah, I think that makes the most sense because he's he's there. And I think you have to see Yoda too, right? We have to see Yoda. We have to see Yoda. Yeah. You see Yoda, I don't know how they were. Uh, maybe really and I don't know how you feel, but Qui Gon's pretty much confirmed too, right? I mean, they they've rumored that for so long now that they're they're at least going to communicate in some way. I really think I'm putting more money in Sam Jackson than in Qui Gon. Okay, but you don't think even just as like a forced voice, not the full ghost yet, but him hearing Samuel Jackson, because Yoda says to him at the end of Episode Three, he says, "I found out how to." Um, Liam Neeson? Yeah, Liam Neeson, like just his voice. Yeah, that, okay, but I think that would be implicit. I don't think we will Right. Back. I think if we see Liam, it would be implicit. Day. I think that's present day, correct, yeah. I think that's present, because Yoda says to him at the end of episode three, yeah. I learned how to commune with an old master of yours. And right. he says, I will teach you. 
But I heard that he, at that point, 10 years later, he still hasn't seen Qui-Gon. He's only heard Qui-Gon. So I think it makes more sense if it's a voice and not the full force ghost. Yeah, I know, I know, man. I know, man. I mean, I think we will see Force Ghost. Liam you think we'll see it? Okay, and I, I'm I'm okay with that. I don't I don't mind. I would love to see Liam Neeson back. I mean, he, I think we're gonna make a pop if we see him. Yeah. I mean, talk about the most wasted character in Star Wars, or at least actor in in, in Star Wars. No, I'm, I'm giving you a more recent character in Star Wars. And I've been in 7, 8, and 9. Well, 7 and 8. Captain Plasma. Captain Plasma. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> that um, might be fair. That's I'm fair. I'm a man who I made him memorable. Yeah. Because I, I, I was like, okay, where is this going after 7? I, I was like, okay. I, I like this character, but then... Eh. I don't even, I don't even know it. No. Well, yes, but I, 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 I figured they would bring her back because you don't actually see her die, so I figured they would bring her back. Yeah. But I, again, yeah, I, that's definitely a wasted character. I mean, that just went nowhere. So is Rose. Rose was such a wasted character. Yeah. There's a lot of them. There's a lot of them. You know it's not, you know it's not character. Yes. I would have rather seen Palpatine, I guess, controlling him through himself, you know, using Snoke as his thing than just letting mm. uh, letting him kill him. Because it, that, to me, doesn't make any... Or letting Ray kill him. Because that doesn't make any sense. Because he's not strong enough to fight. So what is the point of killing the, the thing that you can use as, as a vessel to do what you want to do? Mm. I don't know. It's weird. I'm here. I'm with you. I'm with you. I agree. Um, I... Well, okay. So we yes. talked about Obi Wan. We talked about it. There's really not not much news coming out right now. Right? No, no, I haven't really seen anything either. No, unfortunately, <laughs> I've been looking too. I really have. I've been looking everywhere. I haven't seen anything. Yeah, I mean, there's no news is good news right now. So. Well, that's true. I haven't heard anything about reshoots yet. So apparently, they're happy with what they shot. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that's a good thing. Okay, now I'm going to do this movie. Episode now, 5. Episode 5, The Empire Strikes Back. I hate this movie. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was going to say, I'll take off the bat. Let's go. This <laughs> <laughs> movie already so much fun. That is a fantastic movie. It elevated the story because a great make me feel at the end. And yeah. yet, the movie is almost 40 years old. We're going to be talking to spoilers. Now the reader is looking at that. Get over it. Wait a minute. So you're telling me Star Fader is his father? Yeah. Um, oh. uh, I don't believe, you right? Know. Uh, I, you, I just can't believe you would ruin that for me. No, I, I, yeah, I, I love this movie for the same reasons I think you do, man. The way this movie makes you feel at the end, all the ups and downs in this movie, it's just one of the, it's just such a well paced and well made action movie. It just is. Here's an interesting part. The movie ends with a mad guy winning. Yeah, right. And you can complete the story. Yep. But you still feel hope at the end. You still feel like there's hope at the end. Okay, let me ask you this. I I was in a debate with somebody a few weeks ago. You know, you're an MCU fan, right? You like the MCU movies, I'm guessing. Sure. Oh, absolutely. In in that movie, and in the cliffhanger, Mm -hmm. 
I'm not here. No, 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 no. Cliffhanger. Which which one? Sorry. Infinity Wall. Which one? Sorry, I'm not. Infinity Wall. Oh, Infinity War? Yeah. Yeah, I get. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't think it did. I mean, I, it, it, okay. it great story. The Mac and Thanos won. Now, why, why is that a cliffhanger? But Empire Strikes Back not a cliffhanger. That's fair. I, I, the only reason I would say that that's not, I guess, is because we know that we know how that actually does end. I mean, we oh. knew what was coming. So I guess, by definition, yes, you're right. It is. You're correct. It is a cliffhanger. It definitely is a, uh, or a, uh, or it's not a cliffhanger. I would say because it is a close of of the story. He does win at the end. I mean, that is yeah. what happens. Yeah, I mean, sure. Uh, anyway. Uh, uh, I think, no, I think that's I think that's fair. I think that's absolutely fair and correct. Yeah. I never thought of it that way, but yeah. Yep. Not only did it animate the story that moved everyone forward, it introduces a few new characters to the saga. And that and one of my favorites. And Yoda. My sure. Absolutely. And, uh, well, no, I'm not going to take Mama Fett, but he was an introduction. You know is he, he I thought he was, is, or is that a new who? No, it's when they're all lined up and Vader is saying, I want you to find him. But he's not actually used in this movie, I would say. But he's in that shot, right? Well, he's in Bespin, but yeah. Well, he's on Bespin too. He's with him on Bespin. Yeah, no, but he introduced in the holiday special. Oh yeah. Oh, originally, yes, correct. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That is true. Well, actually, actually, that's not true. He was actually introduced in a uh, fair. It was a parade. Yeah, they they were. It was a new prototype of a stormtrooper, and they only had they eventually only had enough money to make one, so they painted him up all cool and marched him in a in a parade down the street in whatever wherever they were making it at. I saw a documentary on it; it was really cool, and people loved him before it, even the holiday special came out. But the holiday special, technically, yes, is his first day official debut. Yes, I. I got that. I only can watch halfway through that holiday special. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's unwatchable, I think. <laughs> how far have you gotten in it? Have you? I've have watched you... the whole thing, but it's hard to watch. It is hard to watch. I had to stop a few times and come back to it. <laughs> I think I got it up to the part where all the work is on the street. Even so... the Boba Fett sketch, I think, is just it's not great it's not great it's good it's probably the best part of the whole holiday special but it's not great <laughs> it's just not well do you remember the ewoks movies the ewok movies there was two of them oh my goodness man they're, they're on there too they're on disney plus now too man and the I, I remember just a vivid memory as a kid watching one of those, and it was where they were in this giant's house. It was like uh, Jack and the Beanstalk almost, yeah. and they were running around. And I just remember watching that as a kid, but I had this vivid memory watching that as a kid. It was such a weird movie. <laughs> They're weird. And, and they mean two of them, right? They I think two, there's two of them, right? Yeah, there's two of them. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I haven't watched them since I was a kid, but I, I do remember watching them at some point as a kid. Just weird uh, stuff came out of this. Uh, I, mean, I? I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't think so. I can't imagine it would be. Maybe, maybe just for fun. I mean, they don't really change anything in the timeline, so I wouldn't say no. But maybe, maybe uh, I don't know. I knowing mean, Disney, the way they just threw away legends, the way they did, I think maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe 
Well, they're starting to use stuff from Legends now, but for a while they wouldn't. How excited are you to see Thorn in live action? Oh, I can't wait. That's going to be amazing because that's definitely one of my favorite characters too. I mean, there's so many of them I want to see. I want to see like Ezra. They they um, uh, casted the the kid from Aladdin, the live action Aladdin. He's going to play Ezra. They already announced that, and I think they did announce who's playing Thrawn, but I can't remember his name now. Yes, yes, that's right. Because he did the uh, voice too, right, for Clone Wars. I mean, yeah, I mean. And Bo Katan, we got we got um, um, uh, Katie Sackhoff, right? That was awesome. Love that. Love that. Yeah. We know come back, you know, come back. Isn't he from there? Yep. Yep. That's a great casting. That was a really great casting. Cad man. Yeah. We're in any yeah. Man. We oh, are yeah. In well, like I said, with Filoni in charge, I, I, I trust him. Even if he has some misses like Boba Fett, I, I still trust him overall to give us what we want because even within Boba Fett, we see how he handles fan service it's not just i want to give this to you it's i it's part of my story and i want you to i want you know it, it's a part of the story i want to tell at least in his eyes it is you know that that he's a kid and like he always says he's a kid in a sandbox with a boba fett <laughs> figure in his hand <laughs> i mean that's that's what he likes to do he seems like a good guy everyone in there seems like yeah. a good person yeah Yep. Oh. I trust Filoni. I, I think he knows what he's doing. I really do. No, you got Empire Do you have a favorite scene? Favorite scene. I mean, Hoth is a great opening to to that. I mean, that's a that's a great opening. That whole uh, battle and, and and taking down the ATATs with the you know with the rope going around. If you, I mean, as a kid watching that, that was just some of the greatest stuff ever. Um, but I mean, I'm your father. Scene. I mean, never saw that coming. Obviously, couldn't have never seen that. I mean, that was just like, holy crap! What's happening? <laughs> Is this real? Is this not real? What are we doing here? <laughs> you know. But yeah, there's there's a lot of great scenes. Bespin, because I, I love Lando. I love the introduction of Lando and him and Han going back and forth. That whole thing when they first see each other. I love all that stuff. So. What did you think about Yoda meeting Yoda for the first time? Who is it? Yoda. Yoda? Yeah. Well, of course. Yeah. I mean, I again, his banter, the way he's so playful, which we don't see in the prequels, but I love that we see that in him and at Dag and Dagobah, how he's rummaging through all the bags and <laughs> taking the candy and hitting R2 with the stick. I mean, it's 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 great. <laughs> And the training, the training scene is just, I mean, that's one of the best montage training scenes, just as a fan, for sure. Oh, we know the he name of her, and only one. Ooh. Possibly. That's a good possibility. That is a very good possibility, yeah. Because we've still never seen that conversation that is canon, where Yoda didn't want Luke. Yeah. Yoda wanted Leia, not Luke. And Obi Wan pretty much forced Luke onto Yoda. So I would like to see that scene in, in live action. That would be cool. If they, he went there and he said, I'm, I'm, it's time. We need to start training. And he's like, Not yet. He's not ready. And Yoda's like, I'm not talking about him. <laughs> I'm not talking about him. I'm ready for her. <laughs> Let's get this going. That would be a cool scene. I hope we need that. I'm telling you about that. No, that's okay. And then good stuff coming out right now. I mean, you're going to love me. You're going to love having this in class, right? I mean. Yeah. Just being able to watch them at any time, yeah. I know. I'm kind of connected to Star Wars because I'm the main actor 
I'm serious. When are you going to Moon Knight? So far? Moon Knight? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I like it. I'm definitely waiting for this next episode because that first episode is is wild. That's a that's a great opening episode to a series for sure. I mean, it gets you like, where, what is going on here? <laughs> By the end, when he's beaten on that thing the way he is, and I love that scene where they pan out of the bathroom and then they start panning back in, and he's like trying to claw out the the monster is, and you're like, oh, what is going on in there? <laughs> yeah. I do not know He's great. He's he's great. He's great. That's why. I, 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 go ahead. I loved him in uh, in seventy nine. Mm -hmm. I loved him as a character. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I I like him as a character. Absolutely, I love him. So, yeah, it's sad the way that they kind of upset them because we could have had another big three because I like them three together: Ray, Poe, and uh, uh, Finn. Well, I, I like them three. Let me ask you this. In 20 years, or more under 25%, you'll see episodes 8, 9, and 10 with all of them. With the way, with you, mean, you mean 10, 11, and 12? Yeah. Probably. Probably. Only because it seems like they're actually all kind of starting to come around now. I mean, I've heard Daisy Ridley say a few nice things about Star Wars lately where she was kind of like not talking about it. Um, even um, uh, I can't remember his name. Um, not Oscar Isaac, but uh, Finn. Um, um, John Moyenga. Yes. Uh, he's, he's actually said a few nice things recently. So I, I think they're, they're starting to mend those wounds with them, which I hope they do eventually. So maybe in like 15, 20 years, would you think? Yeah, I would say that, that that's over twenty five percent at that point. Yeah, I would say. When you when you also one oh wait no he's dead. I was only only one he Ben Solo back, but he he died and I was nine. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't need to see him back, but I, I'm sure they will bring him back in some way. So. <laughs> He's dead. He'll, yeah. But like Vader, he was brought back to the light side, so he can always come back as a force ghost. So which here's what here's another thing that I don't understand. So they can they can talk to to Luke and everybody as you know as force ghosts. So why aren't Obi-Wan and Yoda there for Luke? When he's thinking about turning off, uh, turning away from the, 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 you know, the force, turning the force off, basically. And then, um, it, um, but, yeah, between, you know, episode six and eight, or, you know, whatever, 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 whatever <laughs> makes him do that. Why aren't they like, dude, what are you doing? Like, this, come on. Like, you don't, my, don't make the same mistakes we did. My only hit, and I have nothing to back this up. My only hit, he put on. Do not room on the <laughs> Do not clean the room we're in here all day. <laughs> yeah. Well, they might have tried. They might not have tried. But no it's, one was not having that door. That's no the one happened. thing that does, I will say, internally anger me about the, 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 the sequel trilogy is just that they completely make him like such a bitter old man. And it's like, that's just not Luke. Luke always saw the hope. He always he was he was the good he was the good of the, of the Jedi, like I, I don't know I, I I always thought Anakin was the chosen one but Luke was the center I think Luke was the true neutral Jedi, he was truly neutral. Uh, we could spend a whole hour discussing this and I think we're going yeah. to oh yeah <laughs> but you. Uh, well, the way I took it is, see, and this is back to, to five and six, really, is the way I always took it was when they have that final battle, him and Vader, and Palpatine's like, yes, use your anger, use your anger. It's not that Luke doesn't use his anger. He just doesn't give into it like like Vader and other people did. He knows he's he's more like Mace Windu, in my opinion, where he understands the dark, he has the dark side in him. He just 
chooses not to do like go that path. He chooses to stay good. That's how I always interpreted Luke anyway, was that he chose to be in the middle and know he where he was. Like, I never thought he ran from the dark side. I always felt like he embraced his dark side and used it. I mean, he may. if he's in the middle, okay. If he may, uh, how do I do this? Uh, make sure that horse has a lot, right? The little horse. Luke, Luke is in the middle, right? Sure. They didn't pound for team. Yep. So who is on the line? When you say Ray is on the line and on that? I mean, in the sequel trilogy, but I think overall it's Yoda. I think Yoda is that guiding light force overall. Yoda, yep. Yeah. I think that's the dichotomy is Anakin and Luke are in the middle. Well, Anakin eventually goes to Darth Vader. But what I'm saying is those two represent the middle, in my opinion. And Yoda is the extreme left or right, whatever you want to say. And Palpatine is the extreme left or right, whichever one you want to say. You know what I mean? Not political, just whatever no, side you want to say they're on. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's no. just, it's, it's, I, that, but I always took Anakin or at least definitely Luke as being neutral as embracing the dark side and saying, we're not going to just shut off the dark side because he, he uses force choke. He just, he does. That's a dark well, side power. Not to interrupt you, I'm sorry, but... But he never know. uses it on living beings. That's his only stipulation. He doesn't kill anything with it. He only uses it against robots and or androids and things like that. You back up your theory about that. And you tell the Jedi when you first see Luke, mm -hmm. he's resting all that. He's, right. He, that's what I mean. I have always interpreted that as him embracing the dark side, but saying, I'm not giving into it. I, I'm not right. letting it rule me. I can still be a good person and use these powers. Right. I think that's what he's saying. Or at least, that's again, that's how I interpreted it, or always have. Was that he was the, he was the true center. He was the true you know, could use both sides and still be good. Well, 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 we can get more into that next week when we talk into the rest of that. Yep. Is there anything else you want to say about that play? Um, I mean, what, what do you think about uh, as far as the, the end of that movie? Because that's that's where it gets tricky is, is the end is, do you think do you think Palpatine knows what's going to happen at that point? Do you really believe? Because he says, we Vader's the one that says to him, we can turn him. And he's like, oh, okay, well, let's try that. But he, but he says he's seen that since the beginning, that he always knew Luke was going to change. But Vader is the one that actually brings it up and says, oh, he's like, okay, well, if you think we can do that, don't kill him. Bring him back here. Um, Palpatine in Empire? In Empire? In the beginning, he's in a transmission, right? Where he's talking to him. Right, right. Okay. Right. But no, what I'm talking about is from is from six when he's talking about um, yeah. bringing him up to see him, and Palpatine and Vader says, "Well, why don't we just try to turn him to the dark side?" And Palpatine's like, "Oh, well, don't kill him then. Bring him up. Yeah, bring him up here to me." Yeah, so, I, 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 I think he knew. I think you he think knew. he? So you think he did have the visions? Uh, of yeah. turning him? I mean, I think mean, Palpatine had the visions, and I think Yoda had a vision too when he was still alive. That's fair. That's fair. Because we do see in this in, in Empire where he, you know, faces Vader, and then it, it's him in the mask. Right. So, I mean, we see that for sure. Where he, he feels the dark side in him. He knows it's there. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I just always, I was always curious about that because it seems like at first he's he's saying it's Vader's idea, and then at the end of the movie he's like, "Oh no no no, I made that up. I'm, I saw it from the beginning that you were going to turn." And then when he doesn't turn, it's kind of like, "Well, did he really see that, or is he just going making it up as he went along too?" No, uh, well, I think it's Lucas. I think I think most of them knew as they went along. Fair enough. I, Fair enough. Yeah. I was just always yeah. curious about that. It was always weird to me. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Do you know what you think you can tell me you always knew Luke and Neo were brother and sister? Do I think who knew that? Luke? Probably not. I think that change probably came with the, you know, Darth Vader becoming Anakin instead of not being a different person. I think that was probably changed at the same time. It, make, it would make more sense that way. Yeah. Because the first movie sets up that they're, they're, there's a love interest between them two, for sure. They don't push the Han Solo thing until the beginning of the second one. That's when they really push Han Solo, you know, with the whole and Hoth thing. Like, oh, you just want me to stay. Oh, you tried to kiss me in the hallway. Don't you remember? <laughs> like, all that stuff. They just start pushing all that on you. And you're like, wait a minute. Wait a minute here. <laughs> so, I, you know. But again... I, it's hard to judge these movies. It really is. Even when I judge the prequels, it's hard for me to judge them because they're written and they're well, they were given to us in a such an out of whack order that it's hard to make the stories, I think, make total sense because by the time he got to the prequels, he he had a different vision for Star Wars at that point. Right. You know, than where he was when he wrote the originals. So it's hard. It's hard. I can always talk about it, and let's face it, it's more of a fun for us talking about it, discussing it, demanding it. Uh, it is what it is. I just, it is. I just wish he wasn't so quiet now. Like, I just wish he would come out and say, like, look, I, you know, I, I took swings and they didn't, some of them didn't work. Like, just admit it. I just wish he would stop being so quiet about it and trying to say, no, I'm perfect. He, I miss mean, him. I bet there's something in that contract that's saying he won't do that. That's probably true. That's probably uh, true. So when he sold it off in 2012, yeah. I probably said, we'll buy it, but you, buy it, you cannot do this, this, and this. Yeah. It, it makes sense. Uh, it does. It does. Because that that's that's... It's just weird because you would think by now he would want to at least explain his side to fans because he said the whole reason he sold it was because of the fans. Right. So if now he's had this time to to kind of sit back and reflect and just say, look, you know, maybe I took some of your criticisms out of, out of control and I, you know, whatever he has to say, whatever he truly feels is his his side of it, just tell us, I think. Oh, yeah, I think. Hmm? So fans that complain and bitch about them prequels? No, 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 no. I, I don't think he has to address that stuff. No, no, no. I don't mean it like that. I, 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 I would just want to say, those fans who complain about them are the same fans who are now accepting them. Yeah, well, no, that's fair. That's fair. I'm definitely one of those. I mean, I'll admit that. I, I, I didn't particularly like the, the prequels at all. I mean, and now I definitely, res- you know, like I said, I respect them a lot more now, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, same here, my man. Yeah. Same here. No, they're not bad movies, and I don't think he should be, I don't think he deserved the criticism he got for the movies. I, I just think he should be able to say, because we all say it, we all know it, even as fans, we love it. But there are plot holes that he created by doing the prequels. And him not being able to just admit that, he still feels like he made perfect movies. And that's where I think the problem is, is his ego. He can't just say to the fans, look, I, I, I thought I was doing the right thing. I didn't. You know, I made a mistake. You know, he doesn't have to address each one individually. He doesn't have to do that. No, that's that's absurd. But just have a little humility and say, yeah, I didn't quite make the right decisions at, at, at some points in, in making the movies. That's all. I mean, nobody's going to disagree that Jar Jar is a bad character. <laughs> I mean, it's just... It, it, he, he serves his purpose. He serves his purpose, but, he, you know, it is what it is. But, again, he doesn't have to individually address it. Just a, a blanket statement of, yeah, I mean, obviously there were things that I could have did differently or that I wish I would have did differently, you know. Just acknowledge it. Have fun with it. I would rather see, have you seen the deep fake of George Lucas where he's making fun of Star Wars, basically, or he's talking about? Mm-hmm. I want to see that guy. Like, I, 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 nobody wants, I don't want to bash him for it. I'd rather him just make a joke about it. Like, oh, yeah, Jar Jar, I thought that was the greatest thing ever. Like, I thought I had a great idea. <laughs> you know, hey, 
laugh it off. Not Nobody, I don't want to bash the guy. I, I love what he made and created for us. So, no, I don't. I never want to bash him. Maybe one day we'll get that. Maybe yeah. one day we'll get that. I just want to see the real because I've seen that George Lucas before in other interviews where he laughs and jokes and has fun, and he's actually a really, you know, funny, charming guy to talk to. To talk to, I just want to see him be honest about it. You know, May, or maybe he feels like he didn't make any mistakes and say that. Just say, "Hey, look, I, I just don't feel like I did. I mean, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, whatever." Yeah, maybe one day. Maybe Man. one. Day. Again, he doesn't owe it to us, so I mean, he doesn't have to do it. He doesn't owe us anything. I'm not saying it like that either. I don't think yeah. he owes it to us. I would just like to see it, just his point I, of view. I, I, I understand what you're saying, and maybe yeah. one day we had it. Yeah. Any kind of fun, I love him. like that. So anything like that, I'm interested in. Any behind yeah. the scenes type stuff like that, yeah. In here, any kind of fun about them playing like that? No, just I, I love where this movie takes us into the next one. So I'm excited for next week too. To finish off. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love the Ewoks, man. I'm one of the I I support Mark Ellis's bid as Jedi is one of the better Star Wars movies. I agree with him. Yeah. I don't think it's the best one, but I agree it's better than than they make it out to be. I love oh, I love the Ewoks. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> the Ewoks are great, man. How can you hate the Ewoks? Come on. <laughs> <laughs> They take, out, they take out two speeder bikes and an AT or a, 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 a ATST. I mean, come on! How can you be mad at them? You can't. You can't. <laughs> and you're mad at them, they will kill you. If you don't be mad, they'll be grateful and they kill you. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, look—they're little savage beasts when they want to be. They are oh, savage little beasts. <laughs> you know, they're they're men. They're cute and cuddly, but when they want to, they're they're still warriors, man. They have a warrior culture, man. They yeah, they don't play. <laughs> and they knew when they play your hand at him from. Yeah. Anyway, Don, where can everyone find you? I, mean, I yes, I am on Facebook at Don Tucker, but I'm also on Twitter at Jedi Master Tuck, and you can find me here with Ben every Wednesday night at the Jedi Academy. And you guys, uh, and I'm Ben. You can find me on my Twitter, Ben underscore Rainy. I'm talking to me Wednesday night on Jedi Academy. Every Monday on Deep Time. Every Sunday night on Unwind with Ben. And you can also find me over on the Northern Entertainment Group. Every Thursday on Rewind That Take. And every Sunday or Saturday on the Northern Countdown. And I think that's everything, right? Yes. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. Had a great time with you guys the other night, too, by the way. That was a great time. You're more than welcome back anytime. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. So, until next week, then I'm today. May the force be with you. See you next week. May the force be with you.